hello everyone and welcome back to my channel as you can tell by the title of this video this is going to be many story times okay it's about five near-death experiences that has happened to your girl don't worry i'm fine i'm a well i'm alive um i'm breathing everything's working especially during quarantine i don't have to worry about literally any of these experiences so yeah let's get into it this first story it happened to me when I was, it was in May of 2003, May of 2003, okay? And let me, let me paint the backstory for you guys. I was about one and a half, no, yeah, one and a half, I was about to turn two in two months. My birthday is in July, where my cancer's at, but um, yeah, so this is exactly what happened. So I live in an apartment building, okay? But my house isn't necessary. The reason why I go back and forth between saying house and apartment building is because it's a multifamily house, but my mother owns the entire house, like the whole building. So she rents out the first floor to tenants. And then me and my mother and like my father and my brothers, we all live in the top part of the, like the second floor, second and third floor. There's three floors to the whole building. Me and my family takes up the second and third floor and then tenants take out the first floor. Okay? Okay. Now, when my parents first bought the house, there wasn't a third floor. My parents built the third floor. It used to be an attic and they completely constructed it. So obviously I'm not going to show you guys, but all of the bedrooms are on the third floor. My bedroom, my parents' bedroom, my brother's bedroom, there's a bathroom and everything comes to points because it's like at the top of the house and like the ceilings are kind of low so it's like not necessarily like ideal but I mean hey I've been living here my whole life so it's like can't really complain but so all of the ceilings and stuff are slanted and come to points so in my brother's room and the ceilings are very low in my brother's room there was a window there is a window that is about like literally like less than a foot off of the ground it's so close to the ground we have a big age gap he is 12 years older than me so at the time he was what like 13 14 and he used to go to the local middle school or was he in high school at this time i don't remember but um he used to go to the local schools like the high school and the middle school he he went to is very close to my house and his fr oh i just spit everywhere <laughs> that is so gross i'm so sorry if y'all saw that but his best friend is our neighbor or was our neighbor he's since moved but his best friend was our neighbor and so his best friend used to always say like hey yo like come outside i'm here and then he would my brother would open up his window to his bedroom stick his head out the window and say i'm coming i'm coming sometimes he would forget to shut the window and sometimes he would shut the window my mom always cussed him out every time we left it open don't leave it open don't leave it open we have a toddler in the house she could fall out the window you see where we're going with this? One day, when my mother was at work and my brother was at school, I, my little toddler self, was just pitter-patting around the house, me and my dad. My dad, he was, the, I obviously don't remember this. I don't remember anything about this. Like, if my parents never told me the story and I didn't see the newspaper clippings from it, I would not have known it ever even happened to me. But, so, my dad, how he explains the story is that while he was, um, ironing one of his shirts and the ironing board is in the hallway he had the door open so he could see me but while he was ironing one of the shirts um and my brother left the window open I toppled my little black ass out the window 80 feet or 90 feet that's how far I fell um anyways though my dad was saying how he literally stopped everything he was doing he ran outside and by the grace of God himself, the tenants on the first floor were home. So their car was in the driveway. So when I fell, I fell on top of their car and I didn't fall on the concrete ground. So that's better. Um, so yeah, um, I was on top of the car. My parents got me. Um, of course, my, my dad got me. My mom was at work. Um, he called my mom, I'm guessing. Um, crying hysterically they rushed me to the hospital then they sent me to um children's hospital in boston um and i recovered fine i didn't break a bone or anything i'm still straight maybe i got a few <laughs> screws loose but that story i think has 
impacted me subconsciously because I am deadly afraid of heights. I don't like roller coasters. I don't like airplanes. I went on a plane. Oh my gosh. I went on a plane for the first time in six years about two weeks ago. Three weeks ago. About three weeks ago. And I literally crapped myself. Like I was like having panic attacks. So I believe that that has definitely had something to do with me subconsciously. So, yeah, that's that, that's it. There's nothing really more about that one. Oh, actually, and ever since then, my parents boarded up the windows. So, like, my brother's window, they put, like, this big guard in front of it, like, this, uh, like, this window guard so no one can go through it. Um, in my bedroom, like, I'm looking at it now, they put a guard on my window, on my, like, a board. They put one in the kitchen, all the windows, like, they were not playing, um, I mean, since then, they've taken it down because, hey, I'm, I'm 18 now. I'm not going to go falling out of a window. So, and there's no toddlers and there's no kids in the house. So, since then, they most definitely have fixed it. But, crazy times. Crazy, crazy times. Okay, so this next one is also one from my childhood. So, I, okay. This is the one stereotype about black people that you can hand me because I don't know how to swim. I still don't know how to swim to this day. I never learned how to swim. My mother put me into swimming classes when I was a little kid and I absolutely hated it. I would cry. I would immediately jump out of the water. Um, I have, I don't know, I just have really, really, really bad anxiety. Ask me right now, what is my worst way to die? I if Death by drowning or death by fire is my biggest fears. I don't like it. I don't and people say that oh death by drowning is so peaceful i disagree god gave me feet he gave me the ability to be a land person a land animal a mammal he didn't tell me oh you're not gonna be a whale you're not no fish you're not a, a shark he said you to shell will be born as a human being if god wanted me to be in the water he would have made me a fish and I don't know if this is like a genetic thing, but like my dad doesn't know how to swim. My brothers don't know how to swim. The only person who knows how to swim is my mother. But yeah. So throw back to when I was about five or s no, that's too young. I was probably around seven. I was probably around seven years old. Okay. From the age range of like six to nine, okay, but I'm really I'm going with seven. I was seven years old, and I remember this day so clearly. So my brother, his best friend, the same best friend that um used to be my neighbor, yeah, they they're still best friends to this day. But um, so they're both a lot older than me. Um, they're they're both about twelve years older than me. So his brother. I mean, I'm sorry, my brother's best friend, he has a little sister and she's around the same age as me. And I remember it was, it had to be summertime. It was definitely hot because I live in Massachusetts. So we don't obviously go swimming in the winter time. It was definitely hot. And so I'm gonna go like probably around June or July, maybe even August. I don't know. But I was just, you know, vibing in the house, you know, doing my little thing, probably playing with a puzzle or a game or something. And my brother, he's like, Tisha, I'm okay. He's like, do you want to um, go swimming today? And I don't know why, but I said, yeah, sure. So I went. He's like, oh, um, his best friend's little sister is going to be there. And so I'm like, okay, cool. So we go over to, I don't even know who this person's house is. It was definitely my brother's best friend's relative, maybe an aunt or um, it was a woman though. Maybe an aunt or a, a close friend of his. I don't know. But he was like, okay, we're going to go over her house. And... I don't know if her house is in the same town as mine. There's not a lot of pools in my town or my city. So I don't know. But it was not that far of a drive where I remember. It was probably like a 20, 25 minute drive max. And so we go over and there's a lot of kids there. But it wasn't a birthday party. It was just a lot of kids there. And then I remember that she was talking to us and she was trying to break the ground rules for us. And she was like, okay, guys. So we have this part that's 12 feet. No, no. She was, okay, wait. She was like, okay, guys, so the pool has two different ends. We have the shallow side for the little kids, which is like three feet to like, I think, max five feet. And then we got the deep end for the adults, which is 12 feet, okay? I don't know how to swim. I heard her say this, 
and I don't know if I thought 12 feet meant 12 inches. I don't know if I thought it was just shallow, but I cannonballed into the deep end and I fell to the bottom. If I go back in time, I would smack the shit out of myself because why would you do that? I cannonballed to the bottom of the pool. I remember I was panicking. I remember blacking out. And then I don't know how long I've been on there. I really don't. But I blacked out for a little bit. And then somebody, I don't know who, but somebody came and swam to the bottom, got me, brought me to the top, and then um, I guess resuscitated me or something. But I remember just going like, <gasps> and then coughing. And then I never went back in the pool for the rest of the day. And I remember my brother literally looking at me like, <sighs> because mind you, he doesn't know how to swim either. So it's not like he could help me. So... That was a stupid moment. A stupid, stupid, stupid moment on my part. But then again, I was like seven. But at the same time, it's like, you don't know how to swim, girl. You don't know how to swim. Why would you do that? Okay, so the third moment that I have isn't really a moment. Because it happens all the time. <laughs> it happens literally all the time to me. And I cannot be the only person. I, I sense that now it's slowly slowed down. Maybe I just started caring more about my life and my well-being. But I used to go through this phase where anytime I'm out in public, walking in the streets, like I used to always walk to my best friend's house. Anytime I'm out in public, walking to my friend's house, going to the park, just doing anything involving me crossing streets, I never looked. I would never look both ways. I would just go. And I was like, if these hit, the cars hit me, they hit me. <laughs> And that is so bad. I was probably depressed, to be honest. He said, so why would I just... And I wasn't like like a little kid, like seven, like the last story. I was like 14, 15. And I would not look. I would just cross. And I remember this one time, I was crossing with my best friend. And we were crossing the street. And I remember it was... I had an iPhone 4. Okay? So this was, this was kind of a while ago. I want to say iPhone 4, when did I get the iPhone 4? 2013, so I was like 12. Yeah, I remember we were walking, we were crossing the street, and this car, it was literally, I kid you not, like this far away from me. And not like, not like, oh, the car was over here and I was over here, like real like distance. It was like this far away from me, from hitting me, and I dropped my phone on the ground. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And it's like a joke we have. And I was like, oh my gosh, I dropped my phone. And then she was just like, bitch, you don't care about your life. Like, you talking about your phone. And I was just like, and it's like still a joke that we low-key have going on. But yeah, I have like mini stories like that. I mean, they kind of like, I kind of don't remember them because it used to happen so often. Like, if I had to put a number on it, it happened to me at least 20 times. At least. Every time I would walk, I would not, I wouldn't look both ways. I would just cross the street. Don't do that, kids. It's not fun. Don't do that. You're gonna feel for your life. Don't do it. Okay, so this fourth one. It is so near and dear to my heart. It happened less than a year ago. So it's still very fresh. It was a traumatic experience for me. So, I got my driver's license. July 25th of 2018. I was 17 years old, okay? Got my license. I felt like a baddie, bro. Like a baddie. And my first car was this like 1999 Toyota 4Runner. She was cute. Oh, he was cute. His name was Otis. Um, but we had to we had to let her go. And she got he got replaced with this beautiful 2015 Nissan Sentra that I named Gwen. Okay. I put a picture of Gwen to commemorate her. She was so beautiful. So, I got her in October of 2018. Of 2018. And I've never been into an accident with her. The only thing that ever happened with her was I hit the curb and I popped a tire. But that was in like January. And then we fixed her. But, so we're going to fast forward to... I believe it was Monday, July 8th, or Monday, July 7th. It was like, whatever that week was of the 8th or the 7th, it was that week. The week of the 11th, because my birthday is July 11th. So the Monday of that week, 
I was leaving work, okay? And if you know Massachusetts, I worked in Westwood and I live in Brockton. Where I worked, there was a bunch of red lights or a bunch of lights in general and then the highway and then you, you just go home. So I'm on my way home from work. I remember I was working at 9 a.m. to 6. I remember this day so clearly, it was so traumatic. I was working at 9 a.m. to 6 and I decided not to go straight home like after like at six like I decided to go and walk around I remember I went to Target then I went to Ulta and then I was like okay I'm gonna go home now so I ended up going home at around 7 p.m. so I start driving and everything was going normal everything was going fine and I hit the the second light once I get to the second light I don't know if it was the sun in my face I was not texting I wasn't doing anything i was looking at the road i was just looking at the road vibing like just wanting to get home and all of a sudden my whole car just completely skirts to the other side like like it completely like i was in one lane it completely skirts to the other lane and i'm like what the hell I'm like who just hit my car and then my glasses flew off my face i had extreme whiplash it was terrible so i get out my car and then and i turn it off and i get out the car and i'm like what the what the hell's going on and this woman, this like older white woman, she's like, you just ran a red light. And I said, what? Ran a red light? Who ran a red light? She said, you just ran a red light. My light was green. Your light was red. She's like, my light was green because my, my light was green. So that means your light was red. You ran a red light. And so she hit me. But I'm like, girl, how you hit? Like, what? Like, so she hit me. Okay, I didn't hear her. She hit me. Because my damage to my car, I'll put pictures if I still have them. I probably deleted them because of the trauma. Um, but yeah, so that was awful. I ended up, my car completely totaled. Um, even though it was, I feel like it shouldn't have been, but they told me that my axis was like scrunched up and that was a lot of money to fix. I didn't even have my car for a whole year and I totaled it. So that is probably like my darkest moment. Um, her car was definitely totaled too. My parents picked me up. I was crying. I was so hysterical. I My parents immediately got me. Um, I had a rental car for a month because they were going back home to Haiti for a month. So I had a rental car for a month. And then when they came back, I had to give the car back. But I didn't I didn't end up getting another car. I don't have another car. But oh, that was terrible. Okay, I still have like, I don't want to say PTSD because I feel like PTSD is something not to be taken lightly but I genuinely believe that I have PTSD because every single time I go behind the wheel of a car like driving or even if I'm sitting passenger I get extreme anxiety I absolutely like I'm so critical I think everyone's trying to kill me I still drive every now and then like I'm still on my parents insurance that was terrible and every time I drive I just think that everyone is trying to hit me and I, I'm so I, super over over cautious. Like now, if I see a light from literally like a mile away, I'm literally just staring at the light. Like I'm staring at the light. Like I'm like okay, okay, because I never want to make that mistake again. Um, for y'all, give me a lectures in the comments. Yeah, I know it was stupid and I know it was a bad choice. And if I could take it back, trust me, I would. It's like my biggest mistake, my biggest regret. Like I wish I called in sick that day from work or. I decided to leave work at a different time or I went in a whole different direction like it's a whole lot like it absolutely stinks but I grew from it um hopefully I get another car I'm not really too worried about it I go to school in New York City I was thinking about moving there um after I graduate so it's not really a car is not really on my mind right now right now but I'm definitely working towards it because I do want to get a car for when I come home and I need to go to work because my parents work and it's just a whole ordeal um but yeah that was the fourth story and probably the one that stings my heart the most the last story that we have is it's kind of funny like i look back on it and i'm like it's kind of funny but at the same time when it happened i was like what the hell and it's another drowning story okay you thought i would learn right no i didn't so this one also happened recently this one happened about two weeks before my car accident um, my friend, she has a pool, and so she invited me and, like,
So she invited me and six other people over to her house to go swimming, right? And so we're like, okay, cool, right? So we go over, we're vibing, we're chilling, you know, it's all cool. She had bomb food, you know, it's, it's whatever. And we're all in the pool and I'm asking my friend who, cause they all know how to swim but me. So I'm asking my friend like, yo, can you teach me how to swim? Because I don't know how to swim. And she's teaching me on the deep end, right? She's like, I'm holding onto like the wall. I'm doing the kick and stuff like that with my feet like the, and then she's like teaching me how to like float and like do that, this thing with your legs. I don't, I don't know. I'm never learning how to swim. Okay. So <laughs> she's teaching me how to do that. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. So then I'm doing it for like a solid, like five minutes. And I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm good to let go. So I let go and I immediately go to the bottom of the pool and I'm still like, I'm all hysterical and I'm like, rah, 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 right? And my friends are all looking at me. They're all looking at me except for one of them who's already on the deep end. She doesn't notice anything's going on. So the, my friends are looking at me and they think I'm like playing a joke or something like that. And I'm like, I'm not playing. Like, I can't live right now. Like, I can't breathe. And so I hear one of my friends, she's like, oh shit, she's drowning. And then that's when my friend who's on the deep end with me, she like swims over to me and she pushes me to the, to the, to the, the curb or yeah, the curb of the pool so I can pull myself back up and I breathe. And then that's when I instantly went out of the pool and I just sat down and I was just talking to them from outside the pool in the pool because I'm never swimming again. Like I plan when I get older and I have my own house, I do want a pool, but I'm not going like... <sighs> I want a pool and I want to, I want it to be like a pool and a hot tub and the hot tub is going to be my type of situation. You know what I mean? That's the one I'm going to vibe with the most because I can't do pools. I have a bad track record with them. Since I was a kid, when I was going through those damn swimming lessons and I would always cry and I never wanted to go in the pool. You see, that was for a reason. I knew what was up. Why was I trying to switch that last summer? Why? 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 So yeah, I'm not swimming again. But yeah, that was that was my stories. Um, the five times that I almost died. If you guys enjoyed my mini story times, I saw that my last story time did a lot better than my usual videos. So hopefully you guys like my more story related content content. I do have more coming if you guys would like that. Um Make sure you thumbs up this video. This is just makeup. Make sure you like the video. Um, leave a comment down below. Any suggestions. Please subscribe to my channel. Subscribe. Let's grow. Right now I believe I had like 51 subscribers. Let's try to get to... I'm gonna push it. Let's get to 70. Okay? We can do it. Let's get to 70 subscribers. Okay? And yeah. So I will definitely see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.